and I didn't bring any slides, so oh. you know, by now. Ah, then we I'm, do it this way. I'm an yeah. anachronism, and also with respect to, to slides. Um, so I. So this should be good. Um, yes, because I mean, most of you you entered into the world of Stützel after the financial crisis. So why did I go into it in the early 90s? Well, when I did my master's, uh, that was really about the quantity equation. So it's already been up here. And um, we had horizontalists, verticalists, the uh, monetarists, post keynesians etc. And I found that both of them were much too naive in their approach to how to link the, the real sphere and the monetary sphere. So, I mean, the monetarist would just say, well, we have full, uh, full employment. And, I mean, all the monetary authorities have to do is to handle the volume of money, and that will start to stabilize prices. post Keynesians, they'll say, well, the monetary authorities, they just have to put the right rate of interest. That will create full employment, and the credit system will just create the credit necessary. Both of them would not necessarily disagree that, I mean, this uh, velocity is fairly stable. And, I mean, that's not what Keynes was saying. He said that velocity is a residual. The problem is that you cannot really test this empirically because, I mean, they, they've come up with the same uh, correlation between prices and money. It's just a question whether the causality goes from right to left, the post Keynesian, or from left to right. So um, I wanted to look further into this. Um, and then I got hold of a Xerox copy of Stuchel's book. You have to remember that this was before the internet. This was before Google. So, so I just had this uh, Xerox copy. Um, and um, then I got Stuchel's quantity equation, which is really about deviations from step in payments and liquidity concern period. So he has his own uh, quantity equation. But of course I could not uh, test that empirically because the, the measures that he used are not, uh, is data that's not collected by the statistical bureaus. So I was sort of stuck there. And then I went to, as part of my PhD, I went to UCLA, uh, Center for Computable Economics, uh, with Vela that you know. And I came into uh, Bela's office, um, and Bela was busy at the phone, and there was a young man standing in there, so they all said to me, Charlotte, listen what he has to say, and maybe give him a little feedback. So there was this young man from the uh, computer science department um, having this idea of a computational model, uh, and um, he wanted to apply this to economics. So he went something like this. Well, you see, we have this cellular space here. And maybe we have some agents down here. That's maybe the demand, demanders and the supplies up here. Maybe they meet somehow. So he explained this to me. And I, I mean, I didn't like his, his model very much. But I thought, oh, you can use this. So first, I had to uh, teach myself how to uh, the German language. <laughs> so next step was I had to to learn how to program uh, because I wanted to have my own digital world so that I could take out the measures from the economic system that I wanted. So so that was the second part of my PhD that I made this uh, this model. Uh, so it's basically a model of a monetary production economy. Um, and I mean, you you have to do a lot of. I mean, that's the problem with being a, 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 a macroeconomist that you sort of have to uh, to have the whole thing. Um, so I would. Uh, I mean, I would start out. You, you know, you need a, a bank, 
and you need some, uh, I think I call them entrepreneurs. And then you need some workers and consumers. And this is how, I mean, you start out by entrepreneurs needing some money in order to produce. And they get that money in the bank, and the bank gets an IOU. So now we're started. And then you have the consumers. I mean, maybe if I had a different color, I, I mean, with this money they hire the workers and they produce some investment goods and some consumption goods. And I mean, if you go through this logic, monetary profit is not a possibility. Um, so why do uh, producers produce in this my, my artificial world? They do it in order to have a monetary profit. But their monetary profit is, an, I mean, in the end, they'll end up with a change in their, their capital. But that's evaluated in a stock market. So I also needed to model a stock market. And I needed workers to, to place their savings in the stock as well. I needed sort of, um, like Keynes, he had this idea that we all have a sense of what's the normal interest rate. So my agents, for instance, when they go to the stock market, they have a memory of all the stock prices they saw earlier, or at least a memory of the lowest stock prices and the highest. And they sort of, oh, it's now a good time to move from cash to, uh, to stocks, depending on this price. Also, why do people, I um, mean, what determines consumption? What drives this economy? Because that's essentially consumption. So I would use <coughs> some kind of Veblen effect and say, okay, if I'm the inhabitant of this square in my world, how much do I want to consume next period? Well, I look to my neighbors and calculate their average consumption, and that's what I consume. If I'm very rich, if I, there's a lot of money in my account, I say, okay, then, then I'll consume 10% more. If I'm very poor, then I'll consume 10% less. Um, consumers cannot go bankrupt, there's a minimum. Uh, there's like a survival consumption that they're always allowed to consume. Producers can go bankrupt. Um, well, just, I mean, I created this artificial world and then, so I didn't go to Stutzel to study cycles, but doing this without having cycles in mind, I got cycles. Um, so this is sort of a, it's natural to, I think, economic systems that you get these, these cycles. I went back and studied uh, Stutzel's quality equation because Stutzel had this idea that when things go very well in the boom, there's probably a negative correlation between, pri uh, between uh, yeah, the PY and the need for money. And I got that as well. So in some periods during the cycle, you will have, if this goes down, this goes down. In other periods, you will have the, the exact opposite. Uh, so, yeah, this, this was my approach to studying, um, to study in statistical and macroeconomics. And so today, well then, this, when I took this, first time I took this uh, model to a conference, uh, Robert Axel came to me and said, you do, you do realize that you're doing agent-based modeling? And I said, well, no, what's that agent-based modeling? Because this was really in the early start, start in 95, 96. Um, so, but the first ones doing it did not apply it for macroeconomics. So it's not until post-financial uh, crisis that agent-based macroeconomics has uh, been a topic. But then they, they don't always get the accounting right. Because that's really important for me that 
you make sure you follow the money, you have your entries in, in your system. Uh, I think maybe uh, any questions for this part? Yeah. One question, when you talk about monetary profits uh, and mm -hmm. entrepreneurs working to, to make monetary profits, what specifically do you mean in, in balance sheet terms? Do you mean the change in net worth? Or do you mean the change in net financial position? Or I mean the change in net worth. Net worth. So, so, and, and uh, entrepreneurs will hold stock in other companies as well. Yeah. They also invest in each other. Yeah. So I simply say, so they have, uh, the entrepreneurs will have some real capital, some production capital yeah. that has a depreciation rate. Mm -hmm. So that's valued at cost price. Mm -hmm. But then they have stock as well, yeah. mar uh, at market price. Mm -hmm. And then they have their banking account. Right, but uh, on, on the level of net worth, um, I don't see why for the closed economy as a whole, um, an increase in net worth shouldn't be possible. Yes, because you have, you have the market evaluation mm -hmm. of the stock. All right. so, if you, so if that rises, net worth rises, right? True. So that's why you need a financial market to have this thing going. But okay, but if you have additional production, for example, then net worth for the economy as a whole can, can increase as well, right? Yes. All right. If you produce uh, investment goods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you don't yeah. consume yeah. them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But you have, you know, I, uh, so I measure the GDP as well mm -hmm. as what's produced this period of consumption goods and investment goods. And I can measure the stock changes in in consumption goods as well. Um, how do consumers get money? Of course, they get money by being hired by the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a closed yeah. system. Yeah. Um, and and uh, then I study the the cycles that are generated both in the stock market and in consumption and. Production and they are so it's really um, in this modern much of what drives the cycles it, it is the stock market. Um, All right. So this is just to say that 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 there's a method for, for going beyond uh, the accounting of of Stutzel. Yeah. And my agents are very simple agents. I said they have simple decision rules because I really I mean it's the system I want to study. It's not making uh, real-world behavior. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting when you have the behavioral assumptions, that the, the ones you chose there. You know, mm -hmm. people make their decision about their consumption by looking at their neighbors, and then how, how do they arrive at that? Because it's probably really, it's, it's realistic, I would say. Yeah, it's because, I mean, I could not use the, the simple consumption function of, of Keynes, mm -hmm. because where did the income come from? I mean, Mm -hmm. So you have to get it started. So I, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I had it from Dusenberry, mm -hmm. uh, who has this, uh, these effects in his uh, consumption theory. Yeah. So I mean, it's bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. So how do I ensure consistency? Well, that's just... Yeah, that's the accounting, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the interesting thing is I have a paper where I focus, actually that, that's supposed to Paper where I focus on consumption, mm -hmm. and because of this conspicuous consumption that this generates, mm -hmm. you have you can see patterns patterns of rich neighborhoods and poor neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and where does the the cycle end? I mean, where's the turning point? It's when the ones in the center of the rich neighborhood borrow so much money mm -hmm. that <laughs> they have to to, yeah. to stop consuming so much. So. Oh. In assuming um, a one space horizon around the chakra, yeah. you have a kind of notion of bounded rationality or bounded information. Um, <coughs> how robust is the model to increasing that horizon? <coughs> In other words, if they're, yeah, 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 they're yeah. taking account of everybody, yeah. we the extreme case or zero would be another extreme or an intermediate level. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how much that would affect the formation of cycles. Uh, <laughs> I have to think back because of yeah. course I, I, I tried this. 
um, it increases cycles that you don't have this uh, full information. So, so the, the fuller the information gets, the cycles decrease? Uh, yes, but I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of effects in this because also if you have full information, you are really back to square one with what is it that starts consumption. Yeah. Okay. But I'm wondering really then, it's a question of um, realisticness. And yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, this is this is my way of having time and space matter in my model. Space certainly, yeah. 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 But I'm or wondering, I don't want to get rid of time. I'm wondering how much space matters. Um, I mean. I mean yeah, Dusenbury has this consumption yeah. mimicking effect. Yeah. It isn't necessarily local, is it? I mean, we read a magazine and we see someone in Berlin uh, buying a nice car. Well, I don't know that car, I'm buying but them, you know? Yeah. It's the, I mean, this doesn't really have, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it is space, I model yeah. it some, but, but yeah. I guess you could interpret it in different, in different ways. Yeah. Um, I mean, this, because then I really uh, left Stutzel and started with this uh, alien-based model, and so I did a Schumpeterian model as well, where you don't have, I mean, you have different kinds of, um, of things uh, driving it. So maybe where do institutions center my work? Well, that's really something I'm interested in now, if I could just take two minutes then. Because, um, as I told some of you, I'm working on this concept of, of uh, der Gutes Kaufmann mm -hmm. or whatever. And I, um, I have like, uh, since I'm at a business school now, business model, governance, and stakeholders behavior. So within organization theory, there's a lot of talk about the good organization. So I say that this would be here. And then I have this idea that we can talk about good institutions uh, and value creation. So that's, that's really, I mean, it's over here that I have this interest in, in governance structure. So maybe we can have a discussion later on on how close this comes to you. In neoclassical theory, this would be the production function. Governance is really the market. And then you have rational behavior. And then you have the Pareto optimality here with the right set of prices governing this. So if you, so if you uh, don't want to go with neoclassical theory, this would be sort of a new way of saying, how do we, uh, create the common good. Uh, how is it? How is the market for you the governance institutions that that I didn't get? Any questions. How I mean in the neoclassical model. Classes. Okay. All you need is a model as a governor. Okay. Yeah. You, you just need the word or ratio of yeah. severe, right? Yeah, so yeah. so in real world we need a whole bunch of of, of uh, governance structures and institutions and organization to yeah. It's just to. Yes, is, is some paper available at the moment from, from Sorry? your work? Is a paper available at the moment? Uh, there's one on the way. On the way. Yeah. Because um, maybe it's going to be better now that I went here. We're <laughs> 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 finished. We won't cut it. Yeah. Okay, lunch, I guess. Thank you. Thank you.